Hi everyone, it's a great honor to be here with you today. If you are a sole entrepreneur who's selling on Amazon or a CXO or a business analyst uh, working for a CXO, I'm sure you're already uh, you know, planning your Q4. What I'd like to do today is I'd like to share some Uber level insights with you that can make your go to market or the go to Amazon marketplace uh, planning uh, a real successful one. Here we're going to talk about if you sit down and you're looking at, uh, you know, planning your Q4 strategy at a high level uh, in terms of, you know, what kind of do you sell new products? Uh, do you want to go aggressively on brand awareness? Is it purely execution on orders? All of these are different areas, right? And in order for you to make any decision whether you want to focus, you know, 60% of your time, effort, you know, money on to some of them, you need a lot of data to be able to make that choice, priority between these areas. So what I'm going to do today in, in, in the next few minutes is to touch upon about 10 areas of your Q4 strategy planning and talk about what kind of data you would need and having that data, what type of insights you can generate. And, and of course, um, you know, the technology today enables us uh, to go through millions of orders, millions of products, millions of keywords to be able to come up with, you know, information extracted out of that data and, and then be able to see it uh, through you know different lenses to different angles to be able to come up with insights right so we're going to talk uh, also a little bit about the tools that you could use but the primary focus is going to be on the kind of data points that are today available that you may or may not be aware of and how to kind of utilize them right so let's begin so let's take a hypothetical uh, example that you are considering uh, you will expand uh, to another geography, right? And the first thing you're going to be needing uh, to evaluate is what is the estimated potential uh, of that region, right? And here you have a very simple formula uh, that allows you to come up with that number. And if you just look at that formula on your screen, uh, uh, of course, the result is the marketing potential, but the inputs are four. One of them is total number of potential consumers. This is going to be a worldwide data depending on if you're doing B2C, you know, is it, uh, you know, what kind of a category you're selling, but this is going to be very closely tied to the overall population or a percent of that population. The second most important thing, which is market share. We're going to talk about market share a little bit in detail now, but let's move on to the next, which is P, which is the average selling price, which is going to remain somewhat very close to your existing product and what you're already selling them at, right? And the next is the Q, which is the average annual consumption, which is also something that you can derive from your past orders in the current region that you're already operating in. So let's come back to the market share, right? The market share is pretty much the most significant factor, which is very specific to the region that you're targeting, right? And for you to be able to come up with that data, uh, you will need some assistance in terms of um, say what is already happening on Amazon for the categories in which I am operating in, uh, who are the current players, uh, what are the kind of estimated sales per month are they generating, what were the estimated sales that they generated say last year in Q4, uh, who are the market leaders. Uh, so that is the type of data that you are going to need to be able to understand that this is the overall market share that I can target given you know the existing dynamics uh, of this category or the saturation uh, you know all of this uh, for you to be able to assess there is a certain type of data that you're going to need you're obviously going to need uh, unit sales or the estimated sales for the products that you're looking at they could be yours or your competition uh, products and the technology allows today to come up with estimations on these uh, products and their sales uh, in a fairly accurate manner that gives you most of these market research initiatives are driven by certain assumptions. But here you are using, you know, advanced AI and ML techniques to be able to estimate sales 
in a manner that they can be very very close to uh, uh, to the actual sales uh, so that then kind of adds up if you have let's say that you are looking at a certain category in which you already know or tracking a competition so you can go and look at that brand and identify all uh, the products they have look at estimated sales for say q4 last year or estimated sales predicted estimated sales for current uh, q4 and identify a, a market share that they have right and then look at pretty much all the products and then come up with a number that gives you a total estimated sales for that num uh, for that set of products or a category of products and then derive the market share that your competition has and then focus on what is it that you want to target to get at if you uh, you know want to enter into that region right of course there are a few other data points that you need you need a lot of historical data to identify trends um, and you also need a good view of uh, who are the best selling products why they might be best selling in the region so that is also a key uh, key data point that that you would need in terms of identifying the category market share right now, um, like I mentioned there, uh, every year we're targeting uh, sellers are hoping to get up to about 30% increase. Uh, but this year, I suspect that um, it is going to be on the upside of 30%, 30 to 50%, um, given, given the current situation, the overall penetration of marketplaces and online buying uh, you know, in the mass. Moving on to the second one, uh, over the past few years, there, there has been a very, very clear difference into how buyers approach uh, their, you know, their purchase, right? Uh, earlier, the first thing that would come to their mind is if I'm looking for, say, a face mask, I would go to Google first and then look at what my options are. But now in the last few years, people first think of Amazon. They go to the Amazon, they start searching on Amazon, right? So it is extremely important for sellers to understand how that funnel works. Uh, what are the type of keywords that are absolutely most important keywords for, uh, for them to target uh, for the kind of products that they are selling? And the numbers are telling us that even if, you know, you are a D2C brand who is focused on getting um, uh, you know a lot of traffic onto your own website it is still important to you know have a play on an e-commerce marketplace for this reason simply because there are just additional more eyes looking at searching for the kind of products that that you are willing to sell uh, you are selling right so with that key difference requires all sellers to understand and work with a lot of keyword related data uh, what we consider to be the visibility or rather the search visibility for your product right which means that you know given let's say again i'm selling a, a set of face masks i have you know i have i have a fair idea of what keywords the sell the buyers are going to use and i want to now know um, when anybody is using that keyword, where does my product stand in terms of the search results? Uh, a lot of sellers think that this is not possible to get at, although these thoughts might, you know, they might come across these thoughts that can I get this data? But now the technology makes it possible that there can be a daily tracking um, feasible and available that allows them to see that where does their products rank. Now this is, uh, this kind of essentially gives a big push to monitoring any strategy that you are making in terms of increasing discoverability of your products, which means that no matter what related keywords people are looking for uh, or searching on, um, and you are trying, you know, optimize your listing or advertising, all of that is expected to essentially push the rank uh, of your products in the overall search results, right? So, so you will be able to track now on a pretty much daily basis uh, what is the search visibility for your products. And for that, the, the important data points are obviously the page rank. Are you on page one 
or page three or page four. Uh, what is the position uh, are you at? What is the relative movement of your? Can I see the trends or a historical data over the past week or two weeks so that I know some of the actions that I've taken have they resulted in uh, you know any increase in uh, or you know any increase in position in terms of um, you know better search visibility. Um, and those are important points that are now possible and available that you should really uh, use while making your own strategy. Next is clearly and it is a related topic which is optimization. Uh, clearly this is, this is a topic that is uh, talked about in really great detail. Uh, so I'm going to just talk about the data points that you need. Obviously uh, understanding the funnel uh, of buyer on, on an e-commerce marketplace fact that it starts from the keyword you need to understand for the kind of keywords that you uh, you are targeting for what are the related keywords what is the search volume and Amazon does not share exact search volume numbers uh, but there are uh, ways tools uh, that can estimate the search volume that gives you sort of a relative um, you know ranking you can stack rank them in the reverse order with the with the uh, the keyword with the higher search volume being at the top and understand these are the search these are the search terms or keywords i must focus on given that they have much higher search volume and of course if you um, are looking at listing optimization then the key metric there is also conversion rate right what amount of um, keyword searches on a particular keyword is getting converted uh, into a sale right so that conversion rate is also um, you know an estimation uh, but you know with AI and ML you can have very very or very close to accurate estimates around conversion rates and search volumes that can guide your decision as to which keywords to focus on in your listing optimization right so make sure you use that uh, Amazon has also come up with a new uh, kind of a metric called search frequency rank. You can see that in your brand analytics and identify search frequency rank is just the rank number. It doesn't give you the absolute search volume number, but it just gives you the rank of the keyword based on the search volume and any additional criteria that Amazon uses. So you should also look at the search frequency rank, the SFR, uh, and make your decisions about which keywords you want to focus on. So the next we're going to talk about profitability, which is very, very crucial for any sustainable business, right? Uh, the key thing here is that if you're selling on e-commerce uh, or Amazon in particular, there are very, very large types of fees that you need to uh, account for in addition to your own expenses, which could be on the side of, uh, you know, your cost of goods sold, uh, your, your shipping to the Amazon warehouses and things like that. Uh, having a very accurate understanding of how much profit you're making at an order level becomes, uh, becomes a key. There are tools available right now that can assess, you know, your revenue, your discounts, uh, your taxes, um, you know, all types of fees on Amazon, any refunds. Uh, and tools that allow you to then input any additional expenses on your side, such as cost of goods sold, so that you get a complete picture of you know, your income as well as your expenses to identify what are the profits you're making. And some of the most important decisions you can make based on this data is, do I go FBA or do I go FBM, right? Uh, you know, what, uh, because these type of decisions you cannot make until you see some data, right? So a lot of people try out FBA and then get this data, analyze it. I'm sure for your existing products, you already are doing that, right? Uh, but if you look at, um, you know, the data you need, uh, you need all types of fees uh, at an order level. Some fees are going to be at the account level. Uh, at an order level, you need tax, uh, you need the discounts applied, you need the cost of goods sold. You need any other supplier expenses and any other additional costs such as you know your advertising cost um, so all of that could be combined and to give you a view of this is your profitability over a period of time and that allows you to make decisions uh, you know at a high level 
whether I go FBA or FBM, whether I cut down on fees, what fees I am, uh, you know, expensing a lot more than I should, how do I cut them down, things like that, right? Moving on to the next one is, is obviously depending on your strategy this year, you will have a very specific strategy for advertising such as, you know, I could be focused on just brand awareness or I could be focused on, uh, you know, sales uh, in general. So uh, clearly, you know, the trends on Amazon currently say that the, the average advertising cost has gone up from something like point a eight dollars to like 1.2 dollars i mean this is the cpc that's an average of course it differs every category every product every type of ad that you make right but there are several tools that can analyze your data and identify what are the areas that you can cut down on your wasteful spend how you can optimize your bid i mean once your campaigns are set up uh, you are primarily only playing with optimizing the bid and given that the CPC is increasing you need to be even more careful now to ensure that you're not making any wasteful spend right we'll talk about some additional tools but uh, from the data that you need for this clearly you need the campaign performance data which is the impressions clicks attributed orders you also always need to keep an eye on the target ACOS that you want to get at uh, with this so that these tools can provide you insights around uh, which keywords to focus on, which keywords to remove from your campaigns and stuff like that, right? Um, if you look at uh, the buying sort of trends or metrics, um, Amazon pretty much, Amazon's Prime program has like 200 million US users. And when they were asked that what is the, what is the critical part of their buying, buying process? And the most important thing that came out of that exercise is that they all look at customer reviews, right? Which means that having good customer reviews uh, essentially increase the desirability of your products, um, improving your overall sales, right? So it's very important to have a review analysis strategy uh, or review analysis section as part of your strategy as you are focusing or investing your time and money on making sure that every sales you're able to convert that into a positive review that further increases your sales, right? Uh, the data that you need is uh, very basic buyer details. Amazon does not share all buyer details. So you will not be able to go down to the level of how can I segment my buyers, but you know what the name is, where is he from? And then the primary thing you need to do in the review analysis is to look at what is the sentiment of this review, right? How can I feed this back into, into to my product team? Uh, you know, what do I need to do uh, in terms of responding to those reviews to be able to capture, uh, you know, make sure that, you know, as a seller, you are out there uh, talking to your buyers and you're building your own brand uh, and your, you know, some positivity around your customer service as well, right? So there are several tools that can provide that sentiment analysis. They can provide tools that will ensure that you can communicate with the buyers. Uh, there are tools that will allow you to uh, um, know or get you get notified when there is a review or a bad review or a good review so that you can take any action that you desire, right? Um, as a private label or uh, as your own brand, you are constantly figuring out, is this the right price, right? You are trying to make decisions that uh, if I increase the price, is there going to be a drop in my sales or no, right? And all of these, you know, you may be running some AI and ML techniques internally or you're consulting outside, you will need tons of data about your own orders and about, you know, um, about say some other data about your competition that you can bring into this to be able to come up uh, with a better answer or a better strategy around how to change your prices, right? So on that end, the data that you need is essentially the current price and the historical price trend. Uh, you need uh, the exact sales or maybe the estimated sales, which are also pretty accurate. You can use the estimated sales for say your competition or you can analyze the price trends 
against the estimated sales for other products playing in the similar category and derive insights from it. Um, you know, so which means you need to track some other products in in tools to be able to get these historical and trend data, right? So these are really some of the key data points that you will need to use to extract, you know, any insights uh, to make a decision on the price point. If you are a retail arbitrage uh, seller, then I'm sure you are up against a fierce competition with many other sellers where you are trying to get a buy box first. So uh, clearly in terms of uh, pricing strategy, you need to be, you need to consider a different set of data in terms of who is winning the buy box when, why they could be winning that buy box, which means you need the pricing data over a trend, over a period of time, uh, who is the buy box owner and uh, you know, what is the price at which the buy box is being won, how is it fluctuating, what is the trend and things like that to be able to extract that data, right? Uh, and that data is, you know, available uh, on several tools, including Celera. Demand forecasting is essentially about managing your inventory so that you are balancing fairly well between, you know, high order rates and uh, high uh, storage fees uh, to be given, right? And uh, there are several tools that you can use, of course, with this pandemic, Everyone has been pushed to kind of really stretch on their entire inventory line, getting their items shipped from wherever they get manufactured, they get ready into the warehouses of the marketplace, right? So with that push in mind, now several new factors have come in. Uh, clearly, you need to know the estimated sales. You need to know, uh, you know, the total number of orders or the order velocity, the rate at which uh, it is being ordered. You need to also understand the trends uh, in the past and then be able to forecast this is the amount of uh, products I need to ship to Amazon. And of course, uh, every Q4 planning strategy, I'm sure you're also considering, is there a new set of products? Do I go private label? Do I, you know, what is my new product strategy for this year? most of the sellers are actually looking to launch their new products in this time right and so at that time uh, you know different type of sellers like retail arbitrage private label versus brand sellers or their own first party sellers they all have a different view of looking at doing product research on amazon right so clearly there are different data points that are required such as uh, you know what is the rank you look at the rank, you identify why it is a big rank or, or, or a higher rank. Uh, clearly estimated sales. Uh, you look at estimated sales and you try and derive what is making these sales. In most cases, it is the rank that plays a significant role. Uh, at Seller App, we've done extensive research on this and we are coming up with um, new metrics that allows sellers to be able to identify opportunities now given that most categories there is fierce competition you know lots of brands are entering uh, there has to be a significantly improved version of how do i conduct my product research from what you know sellers have been doing so far in that direction something that we're coming up with is which is already available on the platform is product innovation index which really means that given that you are already playing into a category where there are lots of products is there a scope for innovation on the product side that will further allow allow the seller to capture that market in an already crowded marketplace right so there are several factors that go into that uh, such as review the review analysis you know the the price trends and many other factors that allow you to come up with that opportunity uh, you know, index or the score given to each product at a product level that you can analyze and then identify is this a good area to play in or not. So keep an eye for that or look out for the product innovation index uh, for each of the products. We looked at a lot of areas on the strategy perspective, but the one thing that I think is changing or becoming more and more prominent uh, for all sellers to consider this season is automation. Simplest way to explain automation is, you know, a stop loss trigger that is completely automated 
on any platforms where you buy or sell stocks or any of the commodities right uh, the it is automated that if you hit a certain price you know the campaigns would be stopped for example or or in case of uh, stock trading you will sell that product or buy that product or short sell that product right so similarly here you can rather than continuously monitoring manually you can set up certain rules so that when those conditions are met uh, you know you can pause the campaign or you can uh, stop the campaign or take several other actions now that's the general idea of automation but this could be used not only in advertising it could be used in the way uh, you know there are a lot of fulfillment uh, tools uh, you know um, that will allow you to do orders that will tell you give you triggers on you know your forecast were right or wrong and things like that uh, there were also tools where you can automate your listing let's say there is a positive keyword or a keyword that is converting well you, there are triggers that get generated that this is the trigger that you need to add to your listing so there is a lot of automation that is coming in place amazon is investing heavily in terms of, on the advertising rule on the advertising side for automation uh, and um, you know there are other places where automation could come in very handy where you know you could be slightly more relaxed than you than you are probably for the last few years uh, so far so pay very close attention to these tools evaluate these tools make sure that you are using them for this q4 and with that i'd like to give conclude with four important things that i want you to walk away from this session right clearly global selling is getting not only easier but it's getting feasible possible profitable so you really want to have a play starting this q4 so make sure you're making uh, you know keeping considering that as part of your strategy second is b2b the opportunity is really big it's going to be there for many many more decades so you really want to start if you're not already playing in that all your products evaluate if they can also be a b2b product uh, and if so how what is going to be the go to amazon marketplace strategy for them third is make sure that you are monitoring through the monitoring tools the position say the search visibility and other things with respect to any strategic decisions changes that you make to your strategy uh, or make changes to your listing make changes to your advertising strategy and things like that and the fourth you know it's set to get over 30% increase in sales so plan for that with that i'd like to stop here and thank you for listening